Good evening, and welcome to the 2016 Boston University Athletics Leaders Celebration. My name is Scott Graham, and I have the privilege of serving as the Director of Athletics Development. I want to thank all of you for everything you do to positively impact our student athletes. The support of everyone in this room, from coaches to faculty members to parents, and most of all, to our leadership donors who allow our student athletes to receive a first class academic and athletics experience. We'd now like to begin the program, and I ask that you direct your attention to the video boards. It is our pleasure to highlight the many accomplishments of our student athletes, teams, and coaches in 2015-16. What a truly special time for BU Athletics. I'd now like to introduce, in his third year as Boston University Director of Athletics, Drew Marichello. Thank you, Scott, and thank you to everybody for coming out, and welcome to the Athletics Leaders Celebration. I think you could see from last year's highlights, it was quite a year. Uh, one of the things that was not in the video, I think, partly because it happened post-production, uh, but I'd be remiss if I didn't point it out, was that Emily Tillo, Questrom class of 2016, uh, was selected as the Patriot League Woman of the Year. It actually gets better. It gets better. She was then named as one of the 10 finalists for Division I for NCAA Woman of the Year. We've never had a BU student who's, who has been so recognized. Um, I have to point out that Emily was the recipient of the Mary C. Beletza Endowed Scholarship while she was here. So you can see the dividends of your, of your support. Scott and Kyle, last year, as soon as we left this event, said, really, we should ramp this up, make it, uh, change it from a luncheon to a dinner, make it a little bit more celebratory. And I think that we all agree we've got a lot to celebrate. We celebrate our past. We celebrate our present. This is also an event where we look to our future. There is such wide representation in this room of people who are so important to us, and this event allows us the chance to thank them all. Our head coaches. Our head coaches are here minus one. The only one who's not here is Nancy Feldman, who's with the team in Maryland. I think that uh, attendance here in the middle of their seasons at such a busy time certainly is indicative of how much our coaches appreciate the support that they're given to run their programs, how much they, uh, how much they appreciate your, your involvement and your, your interaction. Over the summer, I think most of you have seen that we finalized a document called Who We Are. It's uh, really a statement of the experience, or what we hope the experience is here at, at BU. There are 15 tenets in this document. Some are aspirational, but we have achieved this one, and I'll read it. It says, we consider our coaches and staff to be educators and mentors who look beyond the athletic ability of our students and care for their overall well-being. That hits, our, hits the nail right on the head for our coaches in, in defining them and defining how we want their experience to be through our student athletes. I'm very proud of our coaching staff. If you, if you knew them, you'd know exactly what I was talking about. Our st good, good for you. Our, our students are clearly and simply some of the best and the brightest that you'll ever meet. This ev event allows the donors and our students to connect, and in some cases they form a lifelong bond, which I know to be the case. When you meet with our students, when you spend time with them, the word that you will come away with or come away from that interaction, and you'll say they're impressive. It's that simple. I had the occasion to attend the President's Breakfast this morning, 
and I sat next to a faculty member who'd been here for 21 years, and he looked at my name tag. We didn't know each other. And he looked at my name tag. He says, oh, you're the director of athletics. And he, he didn't talk about an event or an accomplishment. He said, you know, I've had quite a few athletes in my class, and they've all done really, really well. And I said, why are you so surprised? And I'm not surprised. And I went on to tell him that they had a 3.16 grade point average last year, which was the highest in, in recorded history. And, and again, that's at a place that is, is quite an academic grind, and there's no place to hide. And that's with all the demands that are placed on them. 3.16 is outstanding. When people ask what I'm most proud of in the two years that I've been the AD, I tell them that I'm really proud of how involved and integrated our students are within our campus community. And I think when you look around the room and you see deans and, and directors and other departments here on campus, I think they certainly recognize and appreciate that campus involvement, which is really uh, important to us. The support of our donors has certainly enabled us to reach new heights. And support is not just about giving money. Support is about being involved. Some folks here have invested in operational budgets and some have invested in facilities and some have invested directly in students, some have given their time, some have served as mentors. Whatever your contribution, everybody in this room has a passion for this department and this institution and we're so appreciative of that. You're gonna hear from one of our valued friends, Bill Kamer, Real quickly, Bill Kamer, uh, back in 2015, we were planning for the 2015 Frozen Four. We thought we had a shot to go there. And I said to Bill that he was invited and would love to see him on Thursday night. And Bill said that he had a commitment on Thursday. And I said, well, that's OK. We'll see you on Saturday. And that was before we played on Thursday. And joked with him about that. And after we beat North Dakota, I left him a message on his, on his phone. I don't think I spoke with him, but I said, I've got a ticket for you. And it's got your name on it, and I'll leave it at Will Call. And I'll see you on Saturday. And right before the game, Bill arrived on, on Saturday, traipsed in shortly before uh, the game began. And I said, I knew you'd be there. And I have to point out that Bill is not from Medford, and he's not from Winchester, and he didn't drive from Connecticut. He actually flew in from Los Angeles for the event. So I think that shows the, uh, the passion of uh, our supporters and, and we certainly appreciate it. I must point out that as the cost of education rises, uh, especially at the elite schools, the endowed scholarship program allows us to stabilize financially. In 2005, we had four. Today we have 38 and our goal is to have 50 by the end of the campaign. I should put that a different way. We're going to have 50 by the end of the campaign. People ask, why 50? What's the magic number of 50? It represents about 25% of our scholarship allotment, which I think is symbolic. I think you also need 50 before you get to 100. <laughs> because I don't think it's a reach to think that we should have half and then even all of our scholarships endowed. I think that's something that a program and a university of this caliber uh, can certainly subscribe to and aspire to. I think we set our targets on endowed coaching positions, which, which uh, is certainly something that would stabilize, stabilize us even further in the future. I've mentioned the word future a couple of times, and I will point out that we're all, everybody in this room, we're all part of this continuum. We're all part of this lineage. Someone came before us and paved the way, and someone's going to come after us. And I, I am reminded of a guy that I used to work for 20 years ago who was a great man. I loved him. He was kind of a, an angry curmudgeon, we had to do this planning exercise for the department and they told us that we had to point out our one year, three year, five year goals and all the strategic plans that go along with it and he kind of grunted and said, I really just have one goal. I said, what's that coach? He said, I just want this place to be better when I leave it than it was when I found it. It's pretty simple, but it's pretty right on. So to everybody in this room, I thank you and I tell you that we're a better place right now and will be a better place in the future because of your support and your involvement. With that, I would like to recognize all the scholarship donors in the room, and I'm gonna ask that they stand when I call their name, and if we could hold our applause until the end. We'll start with Ed Bozell, the Ed Bozell Rowing Scholarship, awarded to a member of the men's rowing program enrolled in the College of Engineering. Charlie Lax, the Lax Endowed Scholarship, awarded to a varsity student athlete in the Questrom School of Business. 
Mary Beletza and Gary Breeden, Gary's not here. Mary C. Beletza Scholarship awarded to a female student athlete. Courtney and Missy McLaughlin, the McLaughlin Family Scholarship awarded to a men's ice hockey student athlete. Larry and Deborah DePaulis, the DePaulis Family Hockey Scholarship awarded to a member of the men's ice hockey team. Bob Moses, the Robert J. and Sandra I. A. Moses Scholarship awarded to a men's or women's soccer student athlete. Joe and Sarah Burke and family, the Burke Family Scholarship awarded to a walk-on student athlete. Doug and Denise Bean, the Bean Family Scholarship awarded to a member of the men's basketball team. Tim and Sheila Petty and family, the Petty Family Scholarship awarded to a member of the men's ice hockey program in the College, College of Arts and Sciences. Could we give them a well-deserved round of applause? <laughs> Thank you. I would also like to recognize our leadership donors in attendance today, and I ask all with a leadership donor ribbon if you would stand and be recognized as well. Once again, thank you. It is my pleasure to introduce Jack Wilson, Questrom student, class of 2018. Jack, obviously a junior, he's a men's lacrosse student athlete. I started to look up Jack's stats to define Jack, and part of me wants to talk about that moped or the Vespa that he's been cruising around campus on. Um, but I'm gonna introduce Jack very, very succinctly by telling you that uh, I have a son who's 13, and if he becomes Jack Wilson when he's Jack's age, I'm going to be thrilled, and I'd sign up for that right now. So the recipient of the Terrier Pride Endowed Scholarship is Jack Wilson. Hi, everybody. Um, <clears throat> my name is Jack Wilson, uh, and I'm a junior in the Question School of Business and Attackman on the men's lacrosse team. First, I would just like to thank everyone for attending the celebration tonight. <clears throat> Without alumni, parents, friends, and university staff, BU student athletes like me would not be able to do the things that we do on a daily basis without your guys' support. I would also like to thank the individuals who donated specifically to the Terrier Pride Endowed Scholarship, the scholarship that I'm honored to be receiving tonight. So for, for me, BU was not a college that I originally had on my list. I was previously committed to play lacrosse at Hobart College, uh, which is a campus a lot like my hometown of Syracuse, New York. Small, uh, close to home, and on the water. After a coaching change at Hobart, Coach Poley got me on campus, um, and in the first five minutes I was on my campus tour, I, I looked at my parents and I knew that this was the place that I wanted to spend my next four years. Even at a school the size of BU, I, just, I felt that everyone was excited and, and proud to be here. A few things that I really noticed were the energy of the city, um, the strong academics that Boston University could offer me, and, and the opportunity to help develop an up and coming program. Reflecting on my sophomore and freshman years, I've been challenged mentally and physically, and I've, but I've truly enjoyed the entire process thus far. Even though it's been extremely challenging mentally and physically, um, it's definitely come with, with a lot of great memories as well. One memory in specific that, that'll stay with me for the rest of my life uh, just came last Friday afternoon in the weight room. So after our lift, Coach, coach brings us into a huddle and um, he goes over a few housekeeping items and then he calls up the six, fresh, or the six sophomores that are still sharing lockers. And he explains that we're gonna have a rock, paper, scissors tournament, best two out of three, and the winner gets the locker that just had opened up. <laughs> so, it was honestly the most intense rock, paper, scissors I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> All you need to imagine is a group of 52 guys huddling around each other, jumping and screaming at the top of their lungs whenever someone had gotten beat. Our lift ended with one of our defensemen, Quinn Germain, getting stampeded by our entire team after a comeback victory over Eamon Hunter. I'm pretty sure Eamon threw out rock, but Quinn threw out the paper and, uh, and trumped him. So. Oh, but overall, making the decision to come to BU has been one of the best decisions I've ever made. 
After getting on campus my freshman year and spending the fall training and becoming closer with Coach Poli and the rest of the lacrosse staff, I began to realize how bright the future of the lacrosse program could really be. The enthusiasm and passion that Coach Poli delivers on a daily basis has been infectious to me and I know it has for the rest of the team as well. Overall, his ability to trust and support every one of the players on our team on and off the field is something that has really impacted me personally and I really hope to emulate, as I, emulate that as I continue to grow as an individual and more importantly as a teammate. Boston University has given me the opportunity to learn and grow in an incredible environment, and I'm humbled and forever grateful for that. The one thing that makes this event so special is the opportunity for the recipients of endowed athletic scholarships to get to know the individuals who support these donors' endowed funds. In closing, I'd like to ask all student-athlete scholarship recipients to stand as I call your name. Grant Gregory of Men's Lacrosse. Adrian Pascucci, Women's Track and Field. Brandon Hickey, Men's Ice Hockey. Taya Knoll, Women's Track and Field. Justin Alston, Men's Basketball. Christine Leibel, Women's Lacrosse. Kyle Foreman, men's basketball. Madison Kraft, women's tennis. Oscar Andrin, men's ice hockey. Grace Boston, field hockey. Taylor Hardison, women's lacrosse. Doyle Summerby, men's ice hockey. Caitlin Law, women swimming and diving. Tate Gill, men's rowing. Megan Dugan, women's basketball. Robert Carpenter, men's ice hockey. Mariah Connolly, softball. <laughs> Spencer Haas, men's rowing. Molly Kern of women's lacrosse. And Jordan Greenway, men's ice hockey. We have one student athlete who is unable to make it here tonight, um, and I ask that you turn your attention to the video boards for a short message from her. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Anne-Marie Jaworski. I'm a freshman on the women's soccer team and the recipient of the Robert J. and Sandra A. Moses Student Athlete Scholarship. We're unable to be there tonight, but I wanted to thank Bob, all of our scholarship donors, and those in attendance for your great support of Terry Athletics. Your generosity helps to provide us with the opportunities to attend a world-class university and participate in the sports we love. Thank you, and I hope everyone has a great night. Go be you. Good evening. I used to be Jack Parker. <laughs> and it is a pleasure to be here this evening to introduce the men's ice hockey coach. Uh, I've known David since he was, since he was a sub-freshman when I was recruiting him in the mid-80s. And uh, when I retired at BU, I was hoping that the university would hire a former player. And then the pool of people that were interviewing, they only had former players, so I knew we had that covered. <laughs> and then uh, I was told, I knew that David was just about to take the Denver University job. I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> But <laughs> in any event, uh, when they told me that David was the new hockey coach, I was ecstatic. I was ecstatic for a number of reasons. I knew the program would be in great shape, in great hands. David was a terrific player at BU, and he was a number one overall draft pick of the Minnesota North Stars. 
he, uh, he had to face adversity that most people never have to face in their, in their college careers when he was told he couldn't play anymore. I think it was Bob Leach, Dr. Leach was the one that told him that. I don't know if it, uh, he was, uh, he had a, a, a physical problem that would not allow him to compete in his, in his junior year. He was the captain elect of the team and his senior year was gone and his, uh, his pro hockey career was gone. And not too many kids can face that type of adversity and, and move on, and certainly David did. He decided he was going to be a hockey coach, and he, he went out about trying to take all the, uh, the right steps to do that. He was an assistant coach at Northeastern. He was an assistant coach at Boston University. He was an assistant coach at Nebraska Omaha. He was the head coach of an, the under-18 team in Ann Arbor, Michigan. He was the head coach in the American Hockey League. He was an assistant coach in the NHL. We couldn't have had a more broader or qualified resume than we got out of David. But I knew all that was beside the fact that he was a great guy and he was a great recruiter. We will have an awful lot, he will have an awful lot of pressure on him this year with the class he's brought in. I think it might be the best class that we've had at BU since we brought in Wilson and Shattenkirk and Benino uh, and Colby Cohen, and David was a big part of recruiting those four guys, and those four guys won a national championship. Not to put any pressure on him. <laughs> but he doesn't need that. He doesn't worry about the pressure because he's been here three years. He's won a Beanpot Championship. He's won a Hockey East Championship, he's a, and he's been in the national championship final game. So being successful is part of his makeup, and I'm sure that this year and the future years will, will, will be the same for him. I can't wait to see the game tomorrow night because I haven't seen a lot of the players that, that, uh, that are coming in. It'll be exciting for me to see it, and I'm sure it's going to be a terrific season. Uh, it, with great pleasure for me to uh, bring up here David Quinn, the head hockey coach at Boston University. I've known Coach for 30 years. Those are the nicest things he's ever said about me. Uh, what an incredible night for BU Athletics. Uh, I think this night uh, symbol symbolizes what BU Athletics is all about. And as Drew was standing up here recognizing all the people that have endowed scholarships to the athletic department, uh, I was standing there watching everybody stand up and I thought to myself, I hope everyone realizes the impact you have on BU Athletics and these student athletes. Uh, BU Athletics has never ever been in a better position than they are today. And it's certainly uh, a large part of that uh, is because of the support we get from people like you. Uh, you're all fortunate enough to sit across from the people that uh, uh, you've impacted. You see the type of student athletes we're all able to recruit. Uh, it has allowed us to be competitive, not only athletically, but recruit students that are serious about school. Uh, Drew alluded to the 3.1 grade point average, which I don't know if that can really seek uh, sink into people because BU is not an easy school. You know, we're not taking uh, yard work and uh, badminton and, and stuff like that. These kids are taking real live courses and they're getting a quality world-class education. And a big part of that is because of the support of people like you. And uh, it, it is amazing uh, to see how far this athletic department has come. Uh, I'm probably gonna embarrass Drew a little bit, but uh, you know, Drew is as good of athletic director as there is in college sports, and I'm not kissing up for a raise or a contract extension. It's just pure fact. And, you know, not only from an administrative standpoint, but from a people standpoint. You talk to these student athletes, and they'll tell you they get to know Drew. Uh, you know, he doesn't sit behind his desk and hide from the student athletes, and it's what makes these jobs so special. Um, as, Drew, as Jack said, I, you know, I'm fortunate to be able to coach at a lot of different places. and, and I, the, I didn't get fired in any of those places. I was able to move on, so don't think that I, you know, I'm difficult to work with. But it's, uh, you know, it starts at the top. And, you know, you see the success we've had on the field. You see the success we have away from the field and the, in the uh, classroom. And you see the type of student athletes that we're able to recruit. And the best part for me is I get to meet and, and get to know the people that support the hockey program. And I also get to meet the people that support other programs. And, you know, from Cardi McLaughlin, who... Uh, played football right before I got to BU. He and I have, you know, formed a friendship, and 
you know, John Zedros, who uh, I've, I've known for about 10 years, 15 years, who's a great friend who supports the program. And, you know, these people, uh, not only do they support the program, as Drew said, financially, but they support it uh, with their friendships and their care for the program, as do, I'm sure, all you people that support the other programs. And, you know, that's the best part of our job and my job. And, you know, Jack talked about the fact that we're playing hockey tomorrow night, which is crazy, you know, on October 1st, and our season goes all the way to uh, the early April, which is the longest season in, in college sports. And, you know, when somebody was talking to me before the dinner started, I was thinking about that. In, in walk Neil Roberts, who's one and one and halfway through his season. So someday when I come back, I hope I, uh, I want to come back as a soccer coach instead of a hockey coach. Um, I just follow, I mean, I picked up where Jack left off when he retired, Neil, right? But it, it, is, an, it, <laughs> it is an exciting time for us. Uh, you know, we, we won draft day this summer. We had four first-round draft picks, but that doesn't get you anywhere in college sports. Uh, Jack talked about the recruiting class we have coming in, and it is a great recruiting class, don't get me wrong, but the best recruit we have is Doyle Summerby. Doyle's been here for three years. He uh, had a chance to turn pro after his junior year. He was a draft pick to the New York Islanders, and uh, the fact that he came back, I don't know if people realize the impact that's going to have on our program. I've been fortunate to coach a lot of great people and a lot of great players, and none finer than Doyle. And, you know, when you have nine freshmen come in, uh, you need great leadership, and we have the best leadership, I feel, in college hockey. And not only will Doyle provide that, uh, the rest of the seniors and the juniors and the sophomores also will, will provide that because it starts with Doyle. And, uh, you know, people, if you get a chance, make sure uh, you get a chance to talk to Doyle because he's a special person uh, on top of being a special player. Um, obviously, expectations are high for us. Um, we were picked first in the league, fourth in the country. Uh, the great part about uh, our start of the season so far, we've been going for about two weeks. We've only been able to practice two hours a week. The best part about it is the camaraderie we have in our locker room because I think we have talent, to, enough talent to win championships, and I'm talking national championships. But as all the coaches in this room know, uh, there's a lot more to winning championships and having talent. Uh, there's about seven or eight other characteristics that you need, and each team needs to acquire those throughout the season. And I think we're off to a great start, and like I said, it starts with leadership, and Doyle will certainly provide that. Uh, but the best part of coming up here tonight is I get to introduce uh, one of our most loyal supporters. Um, he's a keynote speaker for tonight. Uh, I got to know Bill Kamer. Uh, when I first got the job, I had heard his name an awful lot when I was an assistant coach, and because uh, you do hear about the people that love BU hockey and support BU hockey, and his name always uh, was one that I heard quite often. And you know, when I first got the job that summer, Bill happened to be in town, and we got a chance to sit and talk. And I mean, this guy loves BU, and he loves BU hockey. And uh, you know, he's endowed a scholarship uh, to support BU students in Los Angeles and has been the staunch supporter of the law school, the hockey teams, and various other programs here at BU. And like I said, you know, the best part of my job, I really mean this, one of the best parts of my job is to get to know, to know the people that care and love BU, and not only BU hockey. And uh, Bill Kamer certainly does that. So with no further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce Bill Kamer. Um, so the one thing that uh, Drew didn't mention is that when he did call me that night to come in to go to the Frozen Four final game, I was going to be going, I had a flight from L.A. to uh, where we live, to uh, New York a few days later. So actually, I flew cross-country, arrived that afternoon for the, for the final game, flew back in the morning to L.A., and was there for maybe 36 hours, and then flew back to New York. So... Um, but I got to tell you something, it was one of the great things that I've ever done in my life. I mean, as all of you remember, unfortunately, it was a heartbreaking loss, but the character that the coach and team showed in that loss was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my life. And I was, you know, I was glad to be, to, to be able to, to witness that because it was, it was a truly amazing thing. Now, Drew's also asked me in this thing, to, in this uh, speech to keep it very, very short, which I intend to do. And he asked me to, to say a few words about what BU Athletics has meant to me and why I'm so passionate about s supporting the program. But I've got to tell you, I feel 
strange th standing in front of you because I wasn't an athlete at BU. I mean, frankly, I really wasn't an athlete anywhere. Um, <laughs> Unless you want to count my um, extremely mediocre time as a high school hockey player and later on um, playing ex very bad hockey in a low-level adult league, adult, no, checking league. Um, but so I'm really an outsider to, to all of you and to this, to this BU athletic family. Um, but if you'll indulge me just for a few moments, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about, about my story. When I came to BU to go to the law school in the 1970s, I became a really big fan of the hockey team, led by a young rookie coach, he was a rookie coach, named Jack Parker, and a fabulous group of players that included uh, Mike Ruzioni and, um, and a great goalie named Brian DeRocher over there. And um, I enjoyed those games, and. At the same time, I became a big fan of another BU student. She was willing to go with me to games at Walter Brown and to put up with my droning on lectures of the fine points of, of hockey. Um, I hope I maybe taught her a little bit about it. And she climbed up the many, many flights of stairs to the end balcony at the old Boston Garden. And um, when we survived the blizzard of 78, coming home from the bean pot that night, I knew that this was the real thing. And next month, we will have been married for 39 years. She's sitting over there. So I've got to say, if for not, no other reason, BU Athletics has been instrumental for a very important part of my life. After I graduated from law school in 1978, we moved to, to LA, and the next three decades or what I call the dark, dark ages for BU and, and for us. Uh, in those days, the, the university had virtually no contact with the alumni, particularly the alumni on the, on, the, on the West Coast. So the only contact I had was keeping up with BU hockey, and, or at least trying to in the pre-internet, pre-satellite TV days. So it was tricky, but that was literally for 30 years, the only thing that kept the BU flame alive with us was, was BU hockey. Um, during those 30 years, I worked as a real estate lawyer and then um, subsequently joined one of my clients uh, and became their CFO when the company went public. Um, and in my business career, I've seen that the most important attributes for success are strong work ethic, discipline, leadership skills, and the ability to work together in a team environment. Now, a good example of that, the chief operating officer of my company, who runs my company, um, is the absolute best at inspiring and motivating people and, and, and organization. And he always is stressing week after week, meeting after meeting, the importance of everyone in the organization being personally accountable for playing their position in the organization and being accountable to everyone else in the company. And, he, and he's the best I've seen in, in years of business at running an organization. Um, and it won't surprise anyone in this room that he was a football player and an All-American lacrosse player at Penn State. So when BU finally started to reach out to alumni in California and I became engaged, I knew very well the importance of athletics to a high quality education. It's very, very worthy of our strong support and it makes me extremely happy to give it because frankly, I think that an education is lacking if it doesn't include the skills that are provided by, by athletics, it, certainly at this level. So that got me involved, and then I got to know Drew, and I got to know Scott, and um, spent time with David Quinn, and with Jack Parker, and with Brian DeRocher, and a number of other people in the athletics department who I've met. And I've heard from many of the, in the last several years, many of the student athletes who've spoken, uh, as they have tonight, and just all one person after another, just extremely impressive people. And in that regard, I've come to understand what a wonderful family and close-knit family the BU Athletics is. And I just want to thank all of you for allowing me to become part of the BU Athletic family. So thank you very much.
Please give our speakers another round of applause. Tonight, you've seen firsthand how everyone in this room positively impacts our student athletes. We are extremely grateful for your support. On behalf of our entire BU Athletics staff, we hope you enjoyed tonight's event and look forward to seeing you many more times on campus this year cheering on the Terriers. Go BU!